Good morning. Welcome to Rivertown Church, everybody. Good morning, man. Good We're live morning. for worship today. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Pastor Matt. Yeah. Pastor David. Woo, I'm so excited this morning to be before you to worship God. Hallelujah. Amen. Father God, we just thank you this morning, oh God. We thank you that you are in charge, oh God. And we stand on your promises and we stand on your word and we're excited about you this morning, oh God. We're excited about you every day. Father, we just thank you this morning that this is the day that you have made and we rejoice and we're glad in it. Hallelujah. I just want to say hallelujah to you, God. Hallelujah, God. I just want to say hallelujah to you, God. And those that are out in the audience or those that are out there on the airways, just say hallelujah. Just thank Jesus this morning. For he is worthy of the praise. He is worthy to be lifted up. Father, we thank you this morning, oh God. Glory, hallelujah. Say hallelujah. 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 There's nothing he can't do. Hallelujah. There's nothing impossible with God. All things are possible to those that believe. Hallelujah. All things are possible to those that believe. We believe in you, Jesus. We stand on your promises, oh God, and we thank you that your promises are yes and amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. God is still on this throne. Glory to God. I just want to say, Lord Jesus, we know that you are still on your throne. God, and we know that you are bringing this world to you, God. That this is not taking you by surprise. God, I thank you that you're not walking around heaven, wringing your hands around the throne, saying, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Oh, no. Oh, no. I didn't expect the coronavirus. God, I thank you that that's not who you are. That you yourself are still on the throne. And God, I ask you that every person... Uh, who named the name of Jesus Christ could have complete and total confidence and hope that our, we are not subject to the world's economic system. We, are, we, we have a government from heaven that supersedes the government of the nation that we are citizens of. And God, and we can cry out to you, God, um, with a mighty voice of praise. As uh, Pastor Cantrell always says, you guys say it with me on Facebook Live. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Lord, we give you glory. I know you're in your kitchen this morning. Some of you are eating breakfast. Yeah. And uh, you're in the kitchen somewhere or you're in the living room. Somebody might even be uh, inspecting to see how much toilet paper you have in the bathroom. <laughs> but like while you're there today, I want you to just yell out with me all over the house today. Say glory. 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 Amen. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's worship Jesus today. Let's worship the Lord today.
And my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise Unending Ten thousand years and live forevermore Ah, forevermore My soul, oh, my soul Oh! 
It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You just guys just express with me today, wherever you are, if you're at home or in the car or uh, in your kitchen or living room, I know many of you um, cast this stream up into your big screen television, your flat screen, and so would you just say with me right now, um, and if you say it with me, type it in as well, just say, you're a good, good father, would you just say that with me, you're a good, good father, you're a good, good father, just say it with me, you're good, just say you're good, Father. You're a good Father. You're a good Father. Nothing in this whole world could change the goodness of God. Nothing in this world could change the power of God. Nothing in this world can change um, how we feel and how we know that He is in charge and He is in control, God. And we love you and we praise you today. Begin to go ahead and put any prayer requests you have into the comments today. Um, do we have one other worship song? Or are we, uh, are we, yeah, we have one more worship song. And so... I like to be able to just to have some time of praying for the prayer requests. And I can see them as they come in. I see Matiana, uh, Cantrell's wife, put in um, Matiana Holt. She said, you're a good, good father. Christy, Christy Lee says, you're a good, good father. Lord, uh, Cindy Neese says, you're a good, good father. Are there any men out there watching? I see these awesome ladies on here today. <laughs> any men out there watching today? I see Michael Bryan's watching. You, Lord, you're a good, good father. You're a good, good father. You're a good, good father. I see Thank that. You. I see that. Amen. Amen. You're a good, good father. Whatever prayer request you have, go ahead and start typing them in today. Or if you have a if you have a praise or a testimony, um, I'll read it out um, as you uh, as you type it in. And we can just have a great interaction today. I'll read them out. Anything that you want to say, um, I'll be able to write it in and, uh, and read it out to you. Let's worship God. Continue today. Let's worship God. Prayer requests right now. Um, 
Angela Cozy says, God, we, we join with Angela praying for all of those who are out of work and with no pay. God, we'll be able to say, God, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I pray, God, that the church family will come together. And I pray, show us how this church family could come together, God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that, um, that you would touch all those, Lord Jesus. I pray for the health. I pray with Brother Larry Rogers for the health and protection and provision that he's praying for today. Um, I thank you that George Newell's given us a big long distance hug. We love you, Georgia and Matt and family. And for Don Marie, um, she's praying for the com for comfort and healing. Um, and for Tracy, Tracy Johnson Chris, here's, here's her prayer request. Um, he feels, he says, I haven't, I feel a peace I haven't felt in a while. Thank you, God. Oh, wow, Tracy. I feel a peace that I haven't felt in a while. God, I thank you for how powerful that is. Mm. And for Stephanie. Now we pray for Stephanie's daughter. She got that last flight out of Portland, Oregon. She's home with us. God, I thank you that, that, that Stephanie's daughter made it home, God. Not from Oregon, God. She's home. And now, now Stephanie's not alone there in the apartment. God, God, thank you for the miracle you worked in order to get her home, God. Thank you for the miracle that you worked in order to get her home. Mm. God, we thank you that, that Matt Newell's dad um, had a quadruple bypass. Wow, quadruple bypass. God, we know that those surgeries are becoming more and more rare to have all four uh, valves bypassed. And so, God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that, that you um, took care of him, God, and you moved him through this. God, I pray that it would be a, a new lease on life, a new level of faith uh, for Matt and Georgia and their entire family, and their entire family. God, and I pray for, uh, for Tiffany Holland, Lord Jesus. Um, we pray for, um, for her, her mother, Lord Jesus, as... Her stepmother and her stepfather passed away um, last night. So God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that Tiffany will be a great help to her family in uh, preparing the arrangements for the funeral, God. Give Tiffany wisdom, God. Give her, um, give her counsel, God. Give her discernment. Give her authority, Lord Jesus. Give her the ability to speak peace into a storm, God. And Lord Jesus, I pray that this, um, this time, Lord God, will, will be a memory within her family, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Lord God, that there could be hope um, in, in their family that this man is in the presence of Jesus. I pray that there could be hope, Lord God. Mm. Amen. 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 Uh, you guys, go ahead and maybe share us again on your page because we want to get these numbers up. There's 57 watching now, and um, last week we had a little bit more, and so it's be wonderful to kind of be able to share those numbers and get them up a little bit more. Share into any groups that you have as well. Um, during this season... Uh, of online worship and churches all over the country are doing online worship and during this season um, a lot of people who have not been attending church are now attending online yeah. exactly the same way that people who have always been attending church uh, um, uh, are the same way as a woman in our church and um, she's not able to come all the time uh, and she has uh, some family difficulties and some needs to stay at home and, uh, and she's always feeling like difficult about like, man, I, I don't get to come. I don't get to come. I really should be there. And we get caught up in a lot of shoulds. And of course, we'd love for her to be here. But um, I told her, I said, good news, good news. <laughs> Everybody's just like you. <laughs> Everybody's just like you. They're, they're exactly the same way you, the way you are. So anyway, well, go ahead and lead us on in our next steps in the service here today. Well, next, we have our, um, our message. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, what? so it's time for the message. Praise God for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's switch it up, switch it up here. And uh, I want to ask you guys first today, uh, uh, just kind of telling these, do you have any stories over things that have been happening in your families, Kentrell and Matt and Jennifer, anything that's been happening in your families that, that, uh, that you could share today? <laughs> yeah, I got a few. Yeah? Tell us about <laughs> it. Tell us about it. Just um, with everything that's going on. 
trying to find ranch dressing because my family is just <laughs> biblical. Ranch <laughs> dressing? Ranch dressing? Oh, ranch dressing is a big thing in my Did house. Did you say your family is biblical with ranch dressing? <laughs> yes. Or umbilical? Or what, is, what was that? <laughs> it's a big deal in my house. Ranch dressing. Ranch dressing is What all do you guys put ranch dressing on? Well, they, they, they love it on that pizza. On their pizza. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> they cannot eat pizza without ranch dressing. I'm sorry, y'all. But, hey, <laughs> yeah, they can't eat it with yeah. Uh, now, last time I ate pizza, I ranch dressing on pizza was in high school because the pizza was so bad, <laughs> so bad, <laughs> so bad. You cover it up. So yeah. cover it up. You know, so. wow. mm -mm. I don't remember those days. Too. Well, so praise God for what's higher important: toilet paper or ranch dressing? Uh, we got plenty of toilet paper, so uh, ranch dressing is really a big deal. <laughs> so I want to ask anybody here today: um, if you uh, if you can supply Pastor Ken Trill. With some ranch dressing <laughs> that you do not need. If you just look into your refrigerator and you think to yourself, here's some ranch dressing, and we can make it through the quarantine without the ranch dressing that we have, would you please comment here today and just be able to say to Pastor Ken Trail that, that you can have mine? Make arrangements to meet him up somewhere. Tag my Tiana and tell him she can do that. That'd be an awesome thing. Anybody else have something going on going on for you guys? Anybody have something going on? I'm pretty excited. I, um, uh, my daughter's into Minecraft. <laughs> and so last night we got the games connected. Yeah. And so I'm pretty excited to go home today and um, spend some time with Kayla. We're going to build a Minecraft world together. It's going to be awesome. All right, so let me, let me know, Lord, <laughs> like, Graham played Minecraft for a while, and, you know, I... I really, I was thinking to myself, like, what is this evil video game, Minecraft, and no. it's so bad. And I came and asked Dustin uh, and, and you at church, I was like, can, is it okay to play this game? Is it like some <laughs> evil thing? Like, it sounds, sounds like Minecraft. And Matt told me, say, hey, it's, 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 it's the best one you could be playing. It's the best one. It's engineering. Like, we had a lock-in one time, and I was like, and, and I had all the kids make, we had a marshmallow war, and had the kids make <laughs> their own forts for, with cardboard, and I was like, okay, everybody can go play unless you're a Minecrafter. If you're a Minecrafter, stay in here, I need you to build some forts, and, uh, and I had about six students stay in, and it was cool. Right. Yeah. And you can build the fort at the same time? Yeah. You can build the whole world, you can build a whole town. Can, can, can you build a church and everybody Princess go in the Castle. church? Go in the church. And can everybody? Can you build a church build in church, Minecraft yeah. and, and then wow. people can go in there, yeah. where their little avatars sit down? I think there's a limit to five people per game. Though. Oh. I could be wrong. There might be like a oh, server. We, we I hope we don't get down to that. You know, so. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Minecraft church. Minecraft church. <laughs> be kind of funny. I saw online today. Uh, um, I saw somebody said. Um, do you have like? Let, let's go. Let's have a, a quarantine. Uh, no quarantine playlist. <laughs> A quarantine playlist, oh, yes. and it's so. Uh, and I was thinking, like, what what is this? Um, um, and uh, and uh, somebody said the first one, like, like get back, get back to where you once belonged. <laughs> with the quarantine playlist. Um, uh, um, uh, and somebody else said, uh, hey you, get off my cloud. I don't know what song that is. I don't know. Never heard that song. Um, how about uh, oh, we all sleep alone by Cher. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to look that one up. <laughs> and then another one, Alone by Heart. <laughs> and then um, uh, uh, somebody else said, Welcome to the Jungle. <laughs> I got all the masses. Yeah. Oh, that, well, that was that, was yeah. that one. Yeah. From the police, uh, don't uh, stand too close. Yeah, don't stand too close to me. Yeah. That was the one I don't thought of. Too. Yeah, yeah, don't stand too close to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, if anybody else has any more, we'll share them with everybody too. If you if you want to post it, so. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. So, uh, well, we want to. Uh, God's given me a message today, um, and so we just want to be able to pray together and ask God to bless the message today. God's giving us a message today um, called Not Afraid. So let's pray together, God. Let's mm. grab a hand here and pray together. Mm. Lord Jesus, we ask you, God, that you would be in this message today. God, we ask you, God, that you would speak powerfully and boldly, God. And I pray that this, this live stream, God, will be shared again and again and again, God, and that people will be able to be encouraged by it, God. That people will be encouraged mm. by it. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for this. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, as we were praying, I looked down and, and um, Angela Phillips said the, the song like, uh, Stop in the Name of Love. So that was really good. So, yeah. And speaking of that, I want to take a minute and, um, and talk about next Sunday before the message. 
uh, next Sunday, uh, Rivertown Church is hosting our first drive-in church service. Now, we've done a lot of things here at Rivertown Church that are things that other people have not done. You know, so from the, uh, the, the rotating slip and slide, praise God, we'll have to get that back out on one of these days. And I'm having an Easter outside, even when it rains, and then have to rush inside and with all the chairs <laughs> inside. We've, uh, most of our crazy stuff has been happening outside because, you know, our, our property is usually just better than our building in a lot of ways. And so we, we, we have a lot of crazy people, a lot of crazy ideas. And so, but this idea is not original. I, I heard of someone doing this across the country and and uh, I wanted us to get, get in on it, and we thought it was just a great way. So, it, so next Sunday morning, it's come as you are and worship in your car. Come yeah. as you are, worship in your car. Don't let social distancing keep you distance from the Lord. Don't let social distancing keep you dif- distance from the Lord. And so we have, um, uh, you can look on the Rivertown Church page, uh, and you'll see uh, the, the image. I thank God for Douglas Phillips making that awesome image. And you'll see it here on the stand in front, in front of the camera. And let, guys, let us know. Uh, we we got to work with the camera. Let us know if you can read the, uh, the drive-in church sign that we've got sitting out there. Let us know if you can read that for next week. And um, if not, Matt will come and kind of move it up, move it up. I, and so um, let us know if you can read that because it's next Sunday morning. It's at 10 o'clock. And uh, we'll have an FM broadcast that you can turn, tune in um, to, your, um, to your car stereo. Uh, God provided that FM transmitter. And uh, it will also have kind of a, a smaller sound system that you can hear if you want to roll down your windows. And um, you, can keep your, uh, you can have your social distancing but not your church distancing. You can have your social distancing but not your generosity and hospitality distancing. And uh, you've been waving at people in their cars all the time. And um, so one of our church members posted when they heard about it, like, I want to be, I want to see my church family even if it's through the car window. I yeah, want to yeah. see my church family even if it's through the car window. And so, um, so anyway, we're going to move on. Uh, Tiffany said it's just a little bit blurry. So, Matt, pull it up there and let, it, and let, it, let us see it. Let us see that. Um, let us know if you can see it. Mm. It's next Sunday morning. Drive in church here at Rivertown. Well, let's move on into the message today called Not Afraid. Amen. Called Not Afraid. Amen. And, uh, I want to see if you have a, a comment today um, about the time in your life that you've been the most afraid. Was it as a kid? Were you afraid of the dark? <laughs> or were you, um, would, would you think there's maybe monsters in the closet? Did they make that movie, Monsters, Inc., based on your life? <laughs> and so was there times like that? Uh, did, you, uh, did you almost marry someone? And that was the scariest thing you've ever happened in your life. And, you know, that was really bad. You know, that's really bad. Um, um, have you, uh, did you go to the doctor and, went and, get, and were concerned about a diagnosis? And uh, it, it, maybe it came back and you didn't have it. Or maybe it came back and you maybe had something. Well, maybe share us one, some of the most, some of the most um, uh, fearful times in your life. For many people... This event has got them so afraid. I think it's the most our country has talked about fear or experienced fear ever since 9-11. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people now remember, like, where were you when the planes hit the buildings? And the, the people who are now, they'll be able to say years from now, you know, do you remember the coronavirus outbreak? And so today we're really pressing pause on all our message plans and everything we're doing preparing leading up to Easter Sunday. And we just want to really speak from the heart. And, you know, and so, so what are we going to do? Um, are we going to just not worry about it and go on with life as usual? No, you can't do that. That's called underreacting. Um, are you going to buy so much extra sanitizer, extra hand sanitizer and toilet paper and hide inside and prepare for the end of the world? <laughs> You know, I think that you can start a whole denomination or cult right now if you'd like to. <laughs> and, um, you can do that. Um, so uh, I don't, I'm not an expert, of course, but I, I want to talk about this from a faith perspective, from a faith perspective. Um, and so this brings us to today. Um, you, know, you think about professional sporting events are canceled, conferences, concerts. Uh, the revival on the river is postponed here in Columbus. Um, all our schools are shutting down and travel bans and and so we're not going to just ignore it. We're not going to stop, stop piling rice and beans and stay home for three months. Uh, we're going to also be people who does this. Never make permanent decisions on temporary emotions. Amen. Never make permanent decisions on temporary emotions. Amen. And I found in the times of crisis and panic, it's best you know, not to be able to predict into the future and project into the future. Because the fear that people deal with is not really about today. Because 
Everything in your world right now is exactly as it was. Unless you're one of the few people in our, our community that's been affected by the virus, everything in your world is exactly as it was. I know many people have been affected, but, but the problem we're dealing with is projecting into the future and living in the future and instead of living in the present. Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. You'll have time to worry about tomorrow when you get there. Is what it means. <laughs> and so it's best not to project out into the future. It's best to make wise decisions based on what we know today. Um, and uh, as disciples of Jesus Christ, our filter is different. Lord. We have got to look at this world differently. As disciples of Jesus Christ, we've got to look at it different. We don't live as those who have no hope. We're different. And today, today's message title, Not Afraid, really just says it all. And the emphasis is on the word not and not afraid. Amen. You know, so comment with me. If you're listening today, comment with me. Tell me, let me know you're there by saying not. Say not, not, not. <laughs> and say it with me, guys. Like, po po poke the person next to you. If you're at home in the kitchen, just say not afraid. Not afraid. Say not afraid. Not afraid. Not afraid. We're not afraid. Okay. And so we want to talk about three things today. Three ways that we are not like this world. Three ways that we're not like this world. Number one is we live by faith. And not by fear. Jesus was comforting his disciples in John chapter 14. And he said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Lord. And then he goes on to say in verse 27, peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This first point is we live by faith, not by fear. We live by faith, not, not by, by fear. fear. Um, I want to thank God for Danielle Daly helping us out today. She's our off-camera producer. Okay. And so, uh, Danielle, if you can, start posting uh, these points and these, uh, uh, these uh, scriptures into the comments so everybody can see them. So everybody can see them. And thank God for Jerry Laird and, and Sonia and Jennifer Carter and Bland Riley and Connie and Joey and uh, Georgia and Tracy and everybody saying, not afraid, not afraid, not afraid. My friend uh, Matthew Andrade and Joe Ruiz saying, not afraid, not afraid. My mom, Frenesy, says, not, not, not afraid. And so that's awesome that people are participating and commenting. I can hear you loud and clear all the way through, all the way through the internet. And so um, I like the way that the New Living Translation translates it. Um, can't you all read this out for me in the New Living Translation right there? John chapter 14. Right all there. right. All right. I am, living with, I am leaving with you a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give as the gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. John 14, yeah, my, my favorite part of this, Cantrell, is peace of mind and heart. Glory to God. Peace of mind and heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. Peace of mind and heart. Who, who, who are you thinking this right now that, that you'd like to pray that peace of mind and heart for the most? You want to just give a shout out to somebody and say, I want to pray for peace of mind and heart for that person. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, yes, um. Uh, my grandmother. Yeah? yeah. Tell us about your grandmother. Well, she's been battling with cancer for for a while, um, for some years now. Yeah. Um, she's a fighter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. she's a fighter. Is she, that where and, you get some of your fight from? Yes, that's where I get it from. She <laughs> is a fighter, yeah. and she's um, eighty five years old, um, and she's not giving up. Yeah. So she's seen a lot of things. You know, she's battle through. She's battle tested. Yeah. So I just want to just... She's probably not that concerned. No. She's, <laughs> she's no. probably not that concerned about coronavirus. No, she's not. <laughs> I don't think she is. You know, she talks about it a little bit. This, yeah. You know, this going on. Yeah. But, you know, pe even people like her, you know, but that are going through it, they're like, oh, my God, what's happening? You know, there are a lot of people afraid out there. Mm -hmm. So I just want to encourage everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just encourage everybody. So if you're watching today, why don't you just comment for, for me right there. If you feel like it's okay to say it, who would you like to pray for peace of mind and heart the most? Who would you like to be able to pray for peace and mind and heart the most? And everybody can just come together, lift those people up, because we know that some people are much more susceptible to this than yes. others. We know that's truth. And so um, peace that goes way beyond human understanding. Glory. God's not sitting in heaven saying, ah, oh, Oh, I see it coming. I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. 
Our God is faithful. He is in control. He is good. Our God has a plan. He won't leave us, won't forsake us. He is working in all things. He's working Amen. in all things. Yeah. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy 1, 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and a sound mind or self-discipline. You know, I love this scripture because it's kind of a theme scripture for the Rachel family. Um, you know, what do you do when you have a small child and um, the first time you see that small child experience fear at night? Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. It's a scary thing to go to bed as a little kid. Like, they put me in a room by myself, they turn out the lights, and they leave me alone. <laughs> I, I, that's very strange to do that yeah. to people. Uh, you know, the only alternative is let them sleep with mom and dad for 13 years, and that gets quite awkward. <laughs> and so, and some people do that. I know people who do that, but, uh, but it, it, it takes a lot of courage on a parent's heart to do that because you know your you know your what you're doing is you're training courage into the heart of a child. You're training courage and teaching them that although you're not there in the room, and although um, it might be dark around them, that the parent, the provider and protector is still there, even though they can't see them. Yeah. And I think a lot of us need to remember that. that even though God has put us sometimes, he wants us to relax, get into our bassinet, <laughs> relax, yeah. get into our crib. You know, yeah. I, I'll be at the crib. <laughs> relax, <laughs> be at the crib. <laughs> relax at the crib. And, uh, and he wants us to do that. And he wants us to know that even though some things look dark, around us he is still there he is still there and just like mom and dad just like mom and dad all we have to do is cry out in the middle of the night and he will come to us and he will come to us and so um, we would teach our children this um, when they were growing up especially when we had our first child Hannah and we would just teach her this scripture verse over and over again God has not given me a spirit of fear but a power and love and a sound mind. Until you've heard that spoken by a three, two, three-year-old child, you have not understood this verse. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. Lord. And so, um, so we are not panicking. We have peace. We are not fearful. We have faith. For we live by faith, not by sight. Second mm. Corinthians five seven. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, during the Vietnam War, we know that many um, many soldiers were POWs in Vietnam. Uh, there's a famous story of, um, of, a, of Colonel Stockdale, and he eventually became an admiral in the Navy. And he, uh, and he was really this amazing leader um, of, his, of his group of soldiers um, that were in the POW camp. Uh, more of his soldiers that he was in command over in the POW camp survived than, than most any other place um, in the Hanoi Hill team. And uh, Colonel Stockdale at that time, he even worked out – uh, an SOS system and kind of even through the SOS and even an encryption of it so that they could, while they were in solitary confinement and while they were put kind of in that hole, which it really existed, you put them in the hole and it really is a hole in the ground, uh, that people could tap out encouragement and prayer in SOS um, uh, through their cipher to be able to let those people to hear, I'm here, I'm with you, I can wow. hear you, I can, you know, I'm here, I'm with you. Um, he took many beatings for other soldiers. And they, and they asked him, they asked Colonel Stockdale, um, like, how did you survive? And how did you lead these men to survive? And he said, he said, which were the people who didn't survive? And he said, the truth is, it was the optimists that didn't survive. Now, that may sound strange for a minute. He said it was the optimists that didn't survive. And, and some of you people are going to be really glad to hear this part. Because he said it was the optimists that didn't survive. That, that when you only had a mindset of optimism, that you just simply had this easy believism that things would happen for you instead of you happening to them. Amen. And he said that he led them. He said, this is what we had to do. He said that faith only comes after you make a full, complete, and accurate assessment of the situation. A full, complete, and accurate assessment of the situation. That facts breed faith and uh, blind faith always just bleeds an optimism that can't hold water and just can't stand up mm-hmm. in this world and so everything they did was based on uh, based on a full and complete accurate um, assessment of the situation knowing that they may not get back to their families we know now um, what happened but we know that some of those men didn't make it out of Vietnam 
And it, it, he said, knowing in their mind, we may not make it back to our families. We might not ever get out of here. It might be another year. Um, I, 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 I'm not getting enough food. I'm wasting away here. But an accurate assessment of the situation, because at that point, you can only believe God and have faith when you're having faith through the thing that you're actually experiencing. Amen. Denial is not faith. You don't have to have any faith to have denial. Um, you know, I know many of us have said, I don't even want to look at any investments. I don't even want to look. I don't even want to look. Um, uh, that's denial. Um, you're not looking at it. Um, probably the people are doing better who are looking at it, making decisions. Uh, we don't want to stick our heads in the sand. But we're going to be like Admiral Stockdale, the Stockdale principle. Make a full, complete, accurate assessment. And mm -hmm. then decide, what will I believe? Look, looking, looking fear in the face, looking death in the face, looking suffering in the face, and saying, I don't believe you. Amen. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I, I see you. I make a decision. But I am not, I don't have more faith in this virus than I have in God. Amen. And so we live by faith, not by fear. We're sacrificial and not selfish. We're sacrificial and not selfish. Um, Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4 says, Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't look out for your own interests of toilet paper and meat and cereal. Um, don't look out for your own interests of gasoline at the, at, at the gas station. Don't look out for your own interests of, uh, of all these things. Don't look out for your own interests uh, by the way, uh, way you congregate or not congregate. Amen. But look also out to the interest of others. This is a time to love our neighbor as we love ourselves and to make decisions that are best, best um, not just for us, but for the people around us. And be able to say we are sacrificial people in Jesus' name and not selfish because we know our hope. We know that even for us, death is just an upgrade. Amen. As Christians... Uh, the Christians I know that really have faith in God, they don't fear death and the transition into heaven. They might fear the pain. They might fear suffering. They might fear uh, languishing in a difficult state, in a different situation. But the actual moment of transition for, for the Christians I know that have faith, they just glory in it. Glory in it. Like the whole idea, like, like it says, don't go into the light. You know, the old movie, don't go into the light. Like, no, forget that. I'm going into the light. Amen. <laughs> You know, and the people in heaven, uh, none of them are saying, oh, I should have stayed. Yeah. None of them are saying, I just, man, I should have stayed. The ones in heaven are saying this. They say, why did I want to stay down there? <laughs> Every moment of the day, we're working to, to not go to heaven. Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. And so death doesn't have a victory. Death doesn't have a sting for those who believe in Christ. And so, um, and once they can't, and once you're not afraid of death, Nothing else can harm you. Lord. Nothing else can harm you. And during the days of the early church, they faced extreme persecution, even losing their lives for their faith. Okay? We, are not sacri we are sacrificial, not selfish. We are sacrificial, not selfish. Say that with me in your kitchen. Say that with me in your living room today. We are sacrificial, sacrificial. not selfish. selfish. Well, selfish. Uh, yeah, amen. And, and write that in the comments, too, so everybody can see we are sacrificial and not selfish. Um, the first century Christians didn't hoard their goods when they were undergoing persecution. Uh, they were not allowed to have the same jobs as Roman citizens um, as, or as Greeks or, or um, as public officials or people that are members of that, um, of that political group. They weren't allowed to go out in public the same way. The Christians were not allowed to congregate the same way. So does some of this sound familiar? Hmm. In truth, we are, uh, we are living in a moment where the population in the United States is a persecuted class. Um, and some people are still saying, this is not real, it's just some hoax, it's some cover-up. i got to tell you this. The entire world would not buy into this at the same time. Seven billion people, or those who know about it, the seven billion people, all the governments of the world, there would be rogue citizens. And say what you want to about our president, but he doesn't usually go along with things. Yeah. He likes to call things fake. And even, even he, our president, is leading us in this way. And so um, the Christians in Jerusalem, they weren't going out to the mega mart, grabbing emergency supplies, <laughs> trying to hoard up in, in, in their houses. They had to be at these people who were desperate and trusted. And there is a miracle in desperation. 
There's a, there's a faith thing that happens in desperation. In desperation. I want to ask Matt to tell a story, and he doesn't know what story I'm going to ask him to tell. Um, but I want him to tell a story um, that he's told many, many times of when you were in ranger school. And if you don't know that, you can always thank Matt for his service because it's awesome to have a youth pastor as an army ranger. That gives us a lot of confidence as parents. <laughs> you know, but uh, but um, tell the story about being in ranger school. And um, and the song, remember the song from 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 the uh, that you had just started to hear. Matt uh, was an old singer in school and loved karaoke before you put him on worship <laughs> stage, you know. And so, uh, it, it, so um, I think you even met your wife at the karaoke, right? Yeah, amen. Yeah, yeah, and praise God for karaoke, Michelle. <laughs> Glad you went that night, girl. Glad you went that night. Yeah. But but Matt, tell us about um, going. Uh, tell us about um, being a ranger school and that scripture and that song that meant a lot to you. Yeah. So um, I was. Scheduled to go in ranger school about about this time, and it's a rainy season, like, and so uh, at the time, Casting Crown song "Praise You in the Storm" was big, mm. and uh, and it has a bridge at the end where it says, um, "I cast my eyes into the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth." And I thought that was a bridge, but it's not a bridge. It's actually a psalm. Uh, okay. <laughs> and so uh, I went in like, this is going to be my song. This is, and sure enough, it rained. I got entrenchment foot. If you don't know what that means, that means I, I walked the skin off of my foot. Mm. Um, and so like, it, it got a little dange. I got a little, yeah. And, uh, and then we get to mountains and it's just, and it's been raining all the way until mountains. So probably about a month and a half, it's been raining. I'm wet. I'm miserable. Um, I'm just keep praying the same thing and singing the same song. Uh, yeah. It's raining at one point and it got us on light and light and lockdown and uh, and we're spread out and I'm I'm the only guy in the woods with my hands in the air going. Oh crazy wow! <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, but uh, but then we get to mountains and uh, at the beginning of mountains you go up on Mount Yona and uh, and up there we had a service. The chaplain gave a service and that's when I found out that that, that whole bridge is actually a psalm and he preached a whole message on that. He preached Passage. that psalm yeah. that you had been oh, yeah. singing. So first you just thought it was a wow. song on the radio. Yeah. And only when that chaplain chose that same scripture did you realize it was in the, in the Bible? That's when I realized it was scripture, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it blew my mind. <laughs> I was like, I, I have. It was a miserable time. But yeah. I, that was one of, the, one of the great moments in my life where I knew God was with me. Yeah. And mm. I cast my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? Like, that's how I think about most when when situations get difficult that's my passage that i go to like where does my help come from my help comes from the lord yeah and and, and, and matt's story um, um highlights this one this one reality um it's a cliche but it's so true you don't know god's all you need until god's all you have Amen. you don't know god's all you need until god's all you have and it's so important in life to have moments where you don't know where your help's coming from except for the lord it's so important to have moments in life where you think to yourself, um, I don't have the answer. Yeah. My, my leaders don't have the answer. I wonder who does have the answer. Um, there's, a, there's a lot less atheists in foxholes, they say about war. <laughs> and, I, and I would say this. Uh, praise God, there's going to be a lot less atheists at the end of the coronavirus outbreak Amen. than there is. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And so um, in Acts 2, verses 42... Um, 44 through 46, um, it says at verse 44, all the believers were together and had everything in common. It says uh, they sold, sold their property and their possessions and, and to give to anyone who had a need. Amen. Now, that's a challenge, especially now. Because you think thinking to yourself, like, I have this, this amount of food, just having this amount of money, whatever it is. Um, and if I give, I really don't know if I can get any more. Because if I go to Walmart or the grocery store and there's no meat on the shelves and there's no bread or milk, it's not a matter of having money. It's a matter of having food or, or, or supplies or whatever else you need. And so to be able to give when you don't know what you're going to have it's a whole different level of faith. And um, it really hits me to be able to say they sold their property and possessions to give anyone who had need. And when we talk about giving and hospitality and generosity in our church family, God has always led me to say this. You don't need money. 
money. I don't need money. What do you mean I don't need money? I do need money. A cold hard cash. It's the, it's <laughs> it's green. It works. You know, but uh, you don't need money. Money can't do anything for you. You could burn it and get warm. Uh, you could sew it together maybe and make some clothes out of it or something uh, for for covering. But that's about it. Little pieces of paper printed all nice do nothing for you. You don't need money. You need what money buys. You need what money buys. Now, that's powerful because it's very easy to think that the, you know, the plastic credit card or the, 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 the cash or the bank account is some kind of security. And it's not. They even call certain types of investments securities. Hmm. Where does my help come from? And so... To be able to say that, God, I, I trust you because in my desperation, I see that you'll provide. In my desperation, I see, I see that you'll provide. I heard a missionary who raised support one time say this. I said, I, said, I left my job. I left everything, every, the security. I, we didn't have an income. And we started raising support and asking people to help us to do the missions ministry. And he said this. He said, I, I found out that I would rather live with every bite from the hand of God. Each bite out of God's palm than to be able to provide for myself. And so once you get to the place like Matt was in desperation, um, and once you get to that place like that missionary told me about, that it, you fear less, and so you become fearless. You fear less, and so you become fearless. Amen. And that, in that fearlessness, you become a person with contagious hope. With contagious hope. So much so... That we know that God provides for those as we have faith. And so you might even be someone who says today, I, I have faith. We know you don't have faith. Someone else around you may not have faith. And you might be called upon by God to do sacrificial giving to someone who does not have faith. Amen. And then you go back to God in your faith. Like Matt said out of the Psalms, they say, I know where my help comes from. You don't know where your help comes from, but I know where my help comes from. And, and since I know the God who supplies me more, and I know a God who will never leave the righteous forsaken, and it says he will never leave the righteous begging for bread. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Never leave us begging mm -hmm. for bread. Hallelujah. And so we, we said we put others ahead of ourselves. And it says in this passage, it says, And they continued to meet in the temple courts, and they broke bread in their houses um, from, from house to house with glad and sincere hearts in Acts Amen. 2, Acts chapter 2. Let's talk about meeting for just a moment. Like, this is pretty cool that we're able to meet together. Uh, uh, usually there's more of us than 50, but we believe that God is uh, bringing people out. We bring people out of, God is bringing people out for, in a great way and going to use this broadcast in a, in a better way than many times our, our in-person service would have been used. Amen. But um, we really got to be able to say, that, I want to ask you this, do you have enough faith next Sunday? To get in your car and do the same thing you did to go to the store to get food. You got in your car to go to the store to get food. And now, I could be the kinder, gentler pastor right now, but I don't think God wants me to do that. Um, do you have the faith to get in your car and not come for physical food, but come for spiritual nourishment and food? And then watch this. Love others as you loved yourself. Be sacrificial, not selfish. Uh, because selfishness is not good for you. Selfishness doesn't actually provide for you. Um, and to be able to be sacrificial from this point, I want other people to see me that I'm not afraid. Amen. I'm not afraid. Um, even, if I, 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 even if I have to worship from my car, I'm not afraid. You've done other things? You eat in your car? Well... Most of you do. Some of you are pretty. Some of you are pretty rough about like don't eat in my car. You know, you. Uh, um, some of you have changed clothes in your car. You know, some of you have. You've done lots of different things in the car, and I know many of you worship in your car all the time. You worship in your car all the time, and so and I, I double dog dare you in the name of Jesus um, to come for spiritual food and to encourage others because when they see you, they'll be encouraged. When they yeah. see you, they'll be encouraged next Sunday. And so uh, we know a lot of people looking for hope. We know a lot of people looking for hope. Let them be people who find it uh, through, through your church and your church family. Um, so we live by faith, not fear. Uh, we live by sacrifice and not by selfishness. But then the third thing is this. We shine the light. We do not hide it. 
We shine the light. We do not hide it. And in verse 14 of Matthew 5, it says, you are the light of the world. Now, is that true? Is that still true, Christians? Amen. Mm-hmm. How about this? You are the light of your neighborhood. Yeah. So somebody, somebody went around and asked my neighbors, is there any spiritual light on, your, on this street? Will there be enough evidence in a court to convict you of being light? Um, I'd like for, to put in your comments here. Um, anything that God has led you to do so far to encourage other people to be a light during this time. Um, I know I'm not asking you to brag. I'm not asking you to boast. But we really need to be able to see how people are being lights right now. Encourage people the ideas you have to be a light. Um, I know somebody who told me that they sent their children around their neighborhood to ask the older people if they needed help. Hmm. And to give yeah. the older people their phone number. And to, say, and to be able to say that. Um, I know people who have, um, uh, uh, who have bought supplies for other people. Um, and so this is a time right now to put your, put, to put, your, uh, 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 put your actions where your gospel is. Amen. And so to put, love is a verb. To put it into action. And so post in your comments here ways that you can shine the light. Uh, things that you've been able to do um, that God has led you to do um, in that way. And so, uh, so anyway, we want to look back at this scripture. It says in Matthew 5. It says, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and then glorify your father who is in heaven. And so during this time, a lot of people are afraid. A lot of people are hopeless. But I want to say this, that we would become the church becomes the hope dealers. Amen. You know, you know what a drug dealer is, right? <laughs> Stands on the street to become the drug dealer. We've been on mission trips. You know, we've been in neighborhoods and, and, and those kind of things. And some of you, uh, might have, anybody, you might have seen a drug deal go down or you might have been a part of one in your life. You know, I, you know, I, I remember uh, teenagers driving around and realizing that the, the, the guy who was driving, we was going to the neighborhood to, you know, to buy something. And imagine a drug deal going down. You know, it's something that somebody just so craves. They crave that drug so badly. They're willing to buy it not knowing where it came from. They're willing to buy it not knowing um, if they'll be harmed or hurt or shot in the deal. Uh, they're willing to buy it and put themselves at great risk in order to get something that they, that they think that they need to change their mood, change their outlook, and give them a different perspective. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.18, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms, right? Amen. I will praise you in the storm. I look to the hills. Where does my hope come from? My hope comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Amen. Um, and so become a hope dealer today. To become a hope dealer today. Be somebody who says, if you need hope, come to me. Amen. If you need hope, reach out to me. If you need hope, reach out to people. And so I want to say this and even be able to be somebody who's aggressively saying, looking for people to say, I have hope. I have hope. I have hope. And too many Christians I know are talking about the conspiracy theories. Oh, my goodness. That kind of paranoia, honestly. When I know somebody that talks about conspiracy theories too much, the Illuminati and, you know, <laughs> all these different things. What, I promise you this. David Rachel, when you tell me about that. What I know is that you might have smoked too much weed back in the day. <laughs> you know, you're not, waiting on the, you're not waiting on the legalization of anything. You know, you're not thinking about like the, the non, uh, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the, the, the CBD oil that's just some kind of a, a medicine. Now, because I've noticed that people, I don't know if you knew this or not, but long-term pot smokers, long-term marijuana users live the rest of their life in paranoia, most of them I know. And so I, I know people, I remember thinking to myself like, ah, oh, oh, oh. nobody should listen to him. <laughs> nobody should listen to her. And then they make it all spiritual. You know, make it all spiritual. Like, you know, God showed me in a prophetic dream that there was some kind of an evil empire and the nations going by. And so, you know, watch out for people like that. Be a hope dealer. Be a hope dealer. Be a hope dealer. Be a light shiner. Be a love giver. This virus Amen. might be highly contagious, but I know some Christians that need to be more highly contagious. Amen. Um, spreading hope, spreading love, spreading life in Christ. And I'm believing the love and hope of Jesus during this day is going to spread faster and faster and faster. Like, what if your hope through Christ spread, spread faster than the virus? I'm praying that you don't get infected 
with that virus. I'm praying that I don't get affected with that virus. But I'm praying that the gospel virus will become very, very, very effective. Very effective. See, we're not of this world. We don't grieve or panic like those who don't have hope. And so I thought about this, this not afraid. We don't grieve and panic like those who don't have hope. We do not grieve or panic like those who have, have no hope. We are not afraid. I did some research about this and looked up some Bible verses in the New Testament that feature the word not. Okay, so you guys follow me, follow me with this. Um, and then say the word not with me um, as, we're, as we're walking through this together. Um, the angels at the birth of Jesus said, do not be afraid. I bring you a great news, uh, good news for great joy. And then Jesus said why he came. I did not come for the healthy, but the sick. Not for the righteous, but for the sinners. And, and, and the scripture says we're not of this world. Do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus does not lead us into temptation, but he delivers us from evil. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on the earth, but store up treasures in heaven. Do not worry about tomorrow. Each day has enough trouble of its own. We walk by faith, not by sight. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Like Jesus, I will not... uh, Like Jesus, not my will, but your will be done. Not my will. But your will be done, Father. And so do we have great news? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Say yes with me. Say yes Yes. with me. Yes. 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 So we are saved by grace and not by works, justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Jesus did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation. Do not set your minds on earthly things, social media, news and television. Glance at it, but don't keep it in your heart. Set your minds on things above. Let, let, let perseverance finish its work, not lacking anything. Do not become weary in well-doing, the scripture says, because in due time you will prosper if you do not lose heart. Amen. If you do not lose heart. Lord. And so we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. We will not grieve like the rest of mankind who has no hope. We will not give up meeting together. We will not give up meeting together. Yeah. It's amazing because so many people want to want to go to church, right? And uh, like going to church doesn't make you a Christian any, any more than like going uh, to McDonald's makes you a hamburger, or standing in the garage makes you a car. You know, so going up to camp at the Arctic Circle at the top of Norway. That just sounds crazy, right? <laughs> they were crazy people. They're going to camp. They wanted to make it up to the Arctic Circle. That's weird. But that you could get there through Norway. And so if we rode with them and uh, went across the North Sea in a big ferry, and, you know, this little boy from Georgia, boy, that was great for me. It was my first time on an airplane and first time on a ferry. It was good for me. I was 19. And so, um, and so we got to the point that we were going from Oslo and had to go all the way up to the coast in Helgesen, Norway, where, where Leif Hedlund lived. And, and Leif told us, he said, oh, just hitchhike. People in Norway are so friendly. They'll pick you up. No problem, no problem, no problem. They'll pick you up. And so here we are hitchhiking, and, um, you know, um, one guy picked us up in a truck, you know, right outside of Oslo and went for about 20 miles. And we got out, and we stood there for a long time with our bags, and, you know, somebody else picked us up. We went for about two or three miles. And then we went out in the country, in the countryside, and not many cars were coming, and we walked and walked and walked and walked and walked and walked. And uh, I had bought some German bread and had it in my backpack, and I was starting to ration it. Uh, Christoph studied biology, so he was over trying to pick up berries on the side of the road. And <laughs> he told me to you know, eat these but not those, eat these but not those. And I'm thinking, like, man, I should have I gone hunting more you know, growing up. My friends went hunting more. I didn't go hunting that much. You know, I should have done that. What's wrong with me? And like, I, I was trying to sing like a, going, down, going down the road in Norway with my big backpack, singing a shotgun, a rifle, and a four-wheel drive. A country boy can't survive. A country boy can't survive. I was thinking like, oh, man, should have been a country boy. But, <laughs> but, um, so, so we were going through that area, and, um, and, uh, and we got to the point um, that we were uh, going on the road, and it was just desolate. Nobody coming. A two-lane road that winded through the countryside. And I never, I never forget the place on the map. And I was looking at this map and trying to, like, what are these words in Norwegian? I have no idea what this is. Christoph, can you read this? He can't read it. He speaks to me in German, and he doesn't know either in his broken English. And so, and so um, eventually, there is a, a car coming down the road. And I jump out in front of it like this. And I, and, I, and I stop the car like this. I'm thinking to myself, like, 
Uh, I hope they don't hit me. I hope they don't hit me. I'm going to jump. I'm going to just stop the car like this. And Christoph said, what are you doing, David? You know, in his German accent. And, so, and, I, and I, it turns out it was a mail carrier in a little, in a little truck, in a rural mail carrier. And I hold up the map and I, and I point at, like, I'm thinking we're here. And I'm, I'm thinking that there is a lake nearby because we're thirsty. Yes. We're getting pretty thirsty by now. Like there's not much, not much moisture in those berries that Christoph's been picking. <laughs> and so um, I'm, I'm thinking, this is how I die. It's fine. It's, you know, somehow, I don't know. So, I, so I, I hold up the map to the little mail carrier guy and I point the water and I say, water, 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 <laughs> little blue, blue, water, <laughs> me. Water, <laughs> me, water. He says, water, water. Yes, water, water. He says, oh, water, water. And so, and so he, so we go, and um, he puts us in this little mirror curtain, and he drives us around the corner, through this road, through this other road, turns the corner, and there's two hundred people on the side of the road at this lake. We haven't seen anybody in two days. <laughs> and it turns out that in Norway, if they have a nice day, they don't have many nice days per year. They shut everything down. And this is a little country lake, like a country watering hole, and it has a sandy beach on the side. And looked out there, and there was even girls there. We're excited about that. And, uh, and uh, we're excited about, like, there's uh, water there. Like, we went down and we drank the water. The lake, people were, you know, not right there, but... You know, where people weren't swimming to the other area. Um, and so Christoph's filling up the filling up the canteens we had and everything. And so, um, and then we camped that night. We pitched the tent and camped that night um, on the on a little sandbar right there. And, you know, it wasn't ranger school mat, but it was, you know. It sounds like more fun. <laughs> it was a lot more fun. A lot more fun. And so we, you know, I, um, I, I, I was a teenager. I mean, I was at 19, 20 years old. I tried to talk to Norwegian girls in English, and they just giggled and ran away. You know, you know so, and so, and so, and so, because uh, um, we looked really bad and we smelled really bad. You know, too, so, and so uh, if I if I had a lot of whiskers, I'd have had a beard. But you know, thank God I got Indian blood a little bit, and so I didn't. And so um, we came the next morning. The next morning, uh, we got up and I think, what are we going to do now? So we just got down and we've been praying to ourselves, but we didn't. Have, we hadn't had a serious, crazy prayer meeting. So we got down on our knees and we prayed and we prayed and we prayed down on our knees and we got out of the road. And, there's, and I look early in the morning, people going to work, I guess. I mean, all those people were gone from the lake. And, uh, and there, was a, there was some cars that come like five in a row. One, two, three, four, five. And we're just going out like this. And we go, Leif, why did you tell us we could hitchhike? He said, people pick you up, no problem. <laughs> no. And so the last car stopped. It was an old man. The last car stopped. It was an old man. He picked us up. And, you know, I'm sitting in the front seat with him. I'm, like, holding my bag like this, my big backpack. And, you know, <laughs> and he could speak a little English. And I, and I said, thank you. We prayed that God would... Um, that God would send someone. He said, oh, God, God. So, like, I'm thinking, like, this is my chance. I need to share the gospel with this Norwegian man. <laughs> if he can speak English, I said, do you know Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ, he says, I know. I know. <laughs> I know Jesus Christ. And this is what he said. He said, many years ago, our country followed God. After the war, many years ago, Nazis leave. Hmm. Nazis leave. We pray, Nazis leave. Many years ago, our country followed God. He said, he said people needed God. People need God. People needed God then. He said, they knew. They knew they need God. He said, but now, not so much. Hmm. Money from oil. Norway has a lot of oil money. Money from oil. He said, people have city house, country house, three cars, plenty of food. Now, they don't need God. They think they don't need God. That man gave me a lifetime of education in one car ride. Mm -hmm. One car ride. Now, he took us to the bus station. That was great. 
<laughs> that was great. But we called late and we got to the bus station, but and we took the bus the rest of the way. But I just showed me so much that um, you don't know that God's all you need until God's all you have. Amen. And uh, um, we say, you know, this country's created the most wealth in the history of the world. We um, we lead the world, the greatest nation right now. When we say our nation needs to, brought to its knees, needs to be brought to its knees, um, we don't mean that like our nation, our government needs to be brought to its knees. We mean people, mm-hmm. individuals, yeah. friends, neighbors, family members. It's okay to cry out to God in desperation like Matt trying to get up Mount Yona. <laughs> it's okay to cry out the desperation of God like a German and an American boy. Trying to hitchhike, hungry and thirsty, um, in the in the on the country roads of Norway, it's okay to cry out to God like that. In fact, we should we should cry out to God like that. And we believe right now we can say this: it's quite possible, it's quite possible that the coronavirus will lead to the greatest revival. In, 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 in influx of souls into the kingdom of God, into the church. Mm-hmm. It's quite possible. Amen. God causes all things, Romans eight twenty eight to work together for the good of those who love God and who are the called according to his purposes. So we are, we are sacrificial, not selfish. Yeah, I might have to sacrifice, but somebody may be able to become born again and go to heaven and not hell. Amen. Um, and that's not nice or easy to say for somebody who's losing a job or some income. But cry out to God if you're losing a job or some income. Cry out to your church. Cry out to this church. Um, we want to do everything we can to help people. Um, we want to do everything we can to help people. And so we live by faith, not by fear. We are sacrificial, not selfish. We shine the light. We do not hide it. And then 2 Corinthians 4, 7 and 9 says this. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, in jars of clay. In pottery, basically, was what they would have. Um, If we were to say it today, we have this this treasure in Tupperware, is what we'd say today. If we translated it like according to what we would think of jars of clay was just their normal thing. They had this basic stuff. We have this, this treasure in Ziploc bags, like this body. Is my Ziploc bag. We have this treasure in jars of clay. Showing that his all-surpassing power, this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. That's why we are not afraid. Not afraid, not afraid, not afraid. Not afraid. So we want to close um, in time of worship, and then uh, and we're going to talk about receiving our offering through um, digital online giving. And so let's close with a time of worship and, and prayer today. Um, Lord God, we come to you right now. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you right now, God, in this moment, Lord Jesus. God, we're so grateful and thank you, God, thankful, God, for who you are. Hands. It didn't slip through by accident. And so, God, we say to you today, God, God, we thank you for all things. And even for this, even for this, um, these problems in this world right now, God. And so, God, we come to you today asking right now that if anyone here in the sound of my voice would come to know, uh, would not know that if they were to die tonight, that they go to heaven. God, I'd ask you right now that you would, would speak to them in their kitchen, in their living room, in their car, on the street. And if you're hearing the sound of my voice right now, and you don't know without a shadow of a doubt that you, uh, if your life was snapped from you, that you'd be born again and go into heaven. If you're not sure about it, the Bible says that the wages of sin, the payback of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans uh, 10, 9, and 10, it says, It'll come about that all those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans chapter 3, not Romans, Revelation chapter 3 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, 
I will come in. Dying with him and he with me. Jesus is knocking right now. Faith, not fear. Jesus is knocking right now. Sacrificial, not selfish. Jesus is knocking right now. Will you receive the light? Somebody's knocking. They're still knocking on the door of your heart and your life. They're still knocking right now. Thank you, Jesus. How terrible would it be for you to go through this, this time of crisis in our world without hope, without knowledge? Hallelujah. That in that moment, there's no atheists in foxholes, we like to say. And I pray, Lord Jesus, there will be no unbelievers or people that aren't certain of their salvation during this virus. And so, God, I pray right now that if you're hearing the sound of my voice, that you would pray with me and say, I admit, Jesus, that I need you. Would you pray that with me right now? If you, if you are asking Jesus Christ to come into your life, pray simply with me. I admit that I need you, that I'm a sinner and I need salvation. Just pray that with me right now. And if that's where you are right now, if you're receiving Jesus as Savior, if you're making sure of your eternity in heaven and knowing that you'll go to heaven, if you pray with me simply, you say, I admit. Just type it out even. If that's where you are, so let everybody know that you're certain of your salvation if you need to be certain. Thank you, Jesus. Say, I, I admit that I'm a sinner and I need salvation. And then pray, I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross as payment for all my sins in the past and the present and the future. And then pray, I now commit my life to you, Jesus. I commit my life to you, Jesus. Admit, believe, and confess. I commit my life to you, Jesus. Amen. 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 If you're watching right now, just simply type in the words, Amen. Just simply type in the words, Amen. 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 And so, um, next Sunday morning, I, I want to be able to do this. Um, and instead of Amen, while I'm preaching, um, it's going to be, uh, you can just honk your horn yeah. instead of Amen. <laughs> I want you to honk your horn instead of Amen. Now, I don't want anybody, if you have that crazy train air horn to scare people that I've heard about, <laughs> we don't want you to do it. Yeah. We don't want you to do it. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, um, and so uh, we're going to now talk about the offering today. Um, right up in the description to this video, um, there's some links. Um, in, in the links here to the video, um, and I want to say this, um, churches all over the country are just trying to really realize, like, n two things. Number one, who really um, believes in tithing um, when they're not at a church service? Who would drive up to their church to, to give their tithe if they don't give online? Who desperately needs that? And churches all over the country right now are also trying to figure out um, uh, what to do. Um, and so I, this is not any kind of manipulation or any kind of power play. We're not that church. But I would say this. Consider as you are asking God to meet your needs. Consider meeting the needs of others through your church first. It's called the first fruits first fruits um, and be able to say this I trust God uh, I give 10% because I trust God 100% yes. and so in, in, your, in your description here today you can go to rivertownchurch.churchcenter.com forward slash giving and it takes you to an easy to follow through online secure pay portal and, uh, and so if you uh, give through automatic bank draft it's called ACH you can choose that and we pay no fees on that whatsoever we pay no fees it's great. All of it comes to the kingdom in the God's church. If you, um, if you give through a credit card or debit card, there's a small um, a, a couple of percent fee on your, on your gift, and you can take the option to cover that fee um, so the church doesn't have to pay for that fee if you'd like to. And the third option here today is it's, it includes the others, but you can, you can just text. If you have your phone, just text 84321. And you, you put any amount, like if you put... $100 or $200 or $10, whatever it is, in your text message, and you text 84321, it'll bring that same prompt back 
um, that you'll that you get, and you still have to walk through the process. But it all goes in and it fills in the amount there for you as you're giving. And the last way of giving here today is some of you um, love the apps, and um, we, we will probably be signing up during these days for all of the apps. I'm going to get on. Um, somebody said, "Do you have the Cash App?" Oh yeah, we need to get that. Uh, do you have Apple Pay? Oh, we should get that. You know, do you have Venmo? Well, I do, but don't give it to me. You know, but uh, but so so we'll, we'll do some more of that that make things easier for people. But could you just switch over um, if that's a need you have? And maybe it's not the way you always uh, contribute, but could you, could you just switch over and contribute something today and for the kingdom of God? If, you're always, if you normally tithe, praise God, praise God, praise God, yes. praise God um, for that. Um, and um, there's a, I want to tell you guys a praise God story about giving. Amen. There's, a, uh, there's a man who attended our church years ago. And uh, um, he's not around anymore. And from time to time, he'll give an offering. From time to time, you know, he's, he's a very busy man. He's a businessman. He travels all over. We don't see him much anymore. And uh, most of the people here wouldn't even know his name, but I do. Um, out of the blue, last week, $1,100. Hmm. Wow. And that covered, like, a good percentage of what was not here because people weren't here. Hmm. Out of the blue, $1,100. Um, and praise God for that man doing that. Pastor Kentrell um, has a, has a offering declaration to lead us in today. Um, yes. Offering declaration to lead us in today. Amen. And uh, and you guys just kind of if you're at home, just lift up your hands right now because Thank we want to trust Lord. God yes, for God. all of our provision. Mm-hmm. Uh, this you, offering Jesus. declaration is powerful, mm-hmm. and uh, we're going to say it long. We're going to say it loud. Just lift up your hands today. As we open handily, open heartily, say, God, we want to worship you, God. We want to sacrifice and worship Thank you, God. Jesus. And um, God, it's all about you, God. And, and we, we don't want tithing from anybody, but we want it for you. Amen. Yeah. For you to see your faith and for you to see the work of your hands. Mm. And so, can Pastor Ken, you lead us? Amen. Thank you. I want to stand on um, yeah. Yeah. Second, yeah. Second Corinthians mm-hmm. chapter 9, verse 8, yeah. as I read this declaration. Hallelujah. And it says that God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Mm-hmm. That you being always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Glory to God. Mm-hmm. As we stand forward declaring today, we declare and we receive today's offering. Mm-hmm. And we're believing the Lord for jobs, better jobs, yes. raises, bonuses in Jesus' name, yeah. and benefits. Sales and commissions in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. We believe in God for favor with you and with man in Jesus' name. That all things work together for our good because we are called according to your purpose. Father, we thank you right now for favorable settlements, estates, inheritance, interests, and incomes, rebates, yes. and returns, checks in the mail. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Gifts and surprises. Yes. Finding money in Jesus' name. Debt's being paid off. Yes. We believe in God that this church is paid off in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. Father God, we thank you right now, Lord God, for the expenses decrease, decreases. Mm. Spiritual blessings and income mm. increase. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for meeting all our financial needs yes. in Jesus' yes. name, yes. according to your riches and glory. Father, we thank you right now that no good thing will prepare from us in Jesus' name. That when we call upon Amen. you, you answer us in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father God, with our confession out of our mouth, Lord God, we claim victory in Jesus' name. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that I may have more than enough to give to the kingdom of God and to, rem- to promote the gospel all over the earth. In Jesus' name, yes. hallelujah. hallelujah, amen, 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 amen. 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 Yes, Glory to God, um, hallelujah. I want to do something kind of extreme to, to demonstrate faith right now. Danielle, I want you to bring me that my laptop back up here. Right. I'm going to do something. It's dead. Oh, it's dead? Well, I'll do that next week. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's dead. Well, I, so, I got uh, a testimony. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, it's yeah. here. Glory to God. Well, um, me and my wife, we, um, we had some issues on um, about uh, uh, moving, and uh, our place was supposed to be ready on the twentieth, but it wasn't. So, uh, you know, we just believe and trust God. Hmm. And somebody said, "Hey, I want to pay for you to stay here until your place gets ready." So I just want to thank God wow. that He is awesome, and yes. there's nothing impossible with God. Even with these times that are going on, God will supply your need. We just have to trust him and rely on him and believe him. Amen. 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 Yes. 
Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to sign off today, and don't forget, uh, be ready and share the posts uh, and the pictures about the, uh, the drive-in service for next Sunday. And I, maybe do this as well. Um, and we know that you guys have Instagram. We know that many of you have, um, uh, uh, have Facebook, of course, because you're here. But uh, could you consider taking the, uh, one of the drive-in uh, service images and making that your profile picture? Uh, put it on your cover picture. Hmm. Uh, making that your profile picture, that would be amazing for you to do, um, to make that your profile picture. I know that you have this awesome picture of yourself. you got the great smile. It was a good hair day <laughs> that day. But, uh, but could you possibly do that and so that people will see, and, and people will see that because um, we have, there's so many ways that people receive information these days. Amen. It is tough. We used to be able to tune into the television and just see this or that. But there's so many ways people receive information these days. And I believe um, that you can help get the word out. Invite people to come. Um, there, won't, there may be a one other church or two other churches having a drive-in service in town, but I don't know if we will. We're going to really, try to be really prepared. Have the parking set up. Um, have the FM transmission set up. And do everything we can to be prepared. We've never done this before. But so in Jesus' name, uh, we ask you we bless you, church. We bless you, church family, and uh, God bless you, and have a great, great, and wonderful Sunday and a beautiful week in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.